Welcome everyone to another Observability Clinic. Today's topic is Notebook Updates, February 2024. It's amazing how fast time flies. Notebooks have been around for a little while now, also dashboards, new ways to look into Dynatrace data. And uh, Philip, thanks for coming back on an Observability Clinic and uh, to give us some updates on notebooks. Yeah, thank you for having me again. Yeah, maybe quickly for people that don't know you, who, what's your role? Yeah, I'm product manager at Dynatrace and leading the notebooks application on the Dynatrace platform. Cool. What have you prepared for us? I think a lot of live demos, but... Uh... Yeah, exactly. So a lot happened since I was last here uh, joining your observability clinic. Um, and I just want to show some of the new stuff that you can see in the notebooks app, mm -hmm. um, mainly by a demo. Yeah, perfect. Then uh, let's, let's kick it off, I would say. Perfect, yeah. So... Where I want to start with is actually one question uh, that I heard now a couple of times is uh, the difference, you mentioned dashboards, so the difference between notebooks and dashboards. So when do I use notebooks, which is a kind of a new concept versus the dashboards where I believe everyone uh, knows about dashboards, mm -hmm. uses dashboards a lot. Um, and the idea behind notebooks is really this uh, use case of the data analysis. So I really want to I don't know, look into an uh, outage I had and analyze this. Mm -hmm. Or, for example, improve a service that I have. Or, for example, I don't know, I could be searching something across my log data, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really this on-demand use case that you have, and you really want to dive deeply into the data. So you have uh, Rail mm -hmm. there, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the whole uh, data lake house. Plus, you can also fetch external data in a notebook. Mm -hmm. Um, and whenever you 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 find something um, where you say, okay, this is something maybe I want to look over uh, at over time, then you would maybe go to dashboarding. Mm -hmm. So dashboarding, again, I think not, not the concept I need to explain, but this is really this easy to understand overview of your data, real-time data, um, data you really want to watch where you have your, uh, I don't know, SLOs, for example, right? And, and your metrics there. Mm -hmm. um, and this... Notebook is really this ad hoc deep analysis uh, of data that you want to annotate maybe or share with other users. Um, and this is the difference. Cool. I have one more use case for you because sure. the way I use notebooks a lot is when we are educating people on how to do certain th certain things in Dynatrace or just in general mm -hmm. concepts. I'm always creating a notebook and I use it like a step-by-step uh, -step tutorial guide. I say, hey, the first thing I want to do is this into this. To give you an example, we just okay. created something for how do we observe Argo with Dynatrace? Mm -hmm. So I use a notebook to explain what is Argo, what type of data does it get, uh, give us, and how do I get this data in Dynatrace? Then I also provide some queries. Mm -hmm. And so people can take this as like a step-by-step -step guide. And I see this some of our users also adopting, but I really like your explanation. It's, it's ad hoc analysis of a certain use case. And then if you need to look at this data uh, and have more people look at it, then put it on a dashboard, especially over a longer period of time. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yep. And that's all I had as an intro. I really want to jump into mm -hmm. a demo here yeah. and show you some of the latest additions. Mm -hmm. um, this is a, a development environment, so not everything that is there is there for you yet. But uh, in the next couple of weeks, you will have everything accessible that I show today. Um, yeah, so let's create a new notebook. Um, give it a name, maybe housekeeping and then uh, first thing you add to a notebook this is a blank notebook is your data so where do i get the data from um, we added uh, a couple of new options actually and um, one where i want to start with are these logs and metrics entry points so it's basically uh, a builder where you don't need to now i think the last time i was here you i started with writing a dql query yeah um, and here now you have um, a UI where you can really dive into your log data, metric data uh, as a first step without writing any DQL query. Mm -hmm. So this was a, also a feedback that we, we got a couple of times. So basically the learning curve, um, DQL is, uh, in my opinion, easy to learn and easy to understand query language. However, um, it, is, uh, it needs some learning, some training, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, and this is a perfect place to start with and say, okay, I want to explore my log data. Mm -hmm. uh, you automatically get uh, 20 logs here. 
And for example, you can filter by status. So now if I say, okay, I only want to look at error logs, um, I only see error logs, whoops. And now if I open the options here, so this is also one of the main concepts in, in notebooks that you have to on the right side, the options, you can visualize the data in different way. Uh, but one thing that we introduced is this data mapping now for all visualization. So I can really see, okay, I, I, I fetch log data, but what do I really want to see now? And for example, in, in my case, I want to see the timestamp of the log and the content that makes sense. Also the status I had. Um, and then um, I can, for example, say, I want to see the Kubernetes namespace where the log mm -hmm. is coming from. Mm -hmm. Just enable this here. Cool. Um, and uh, let's see if this was limited to 20 now, but I don't know, let's see, collect 200 logs, run this again. And now I have 200 records of uh, logs here in the, uh, with the Kubernetes namespace here as a dimension. Mm -hmm. And um, one also main thing is that we always uh, try to allow you directly interacting with the data. Mm -hmm. So now, um, even in this builder mode, you can click on the Kubernetes namespace column here and say, uh, have different commands available. So you could sort, for example, you could filter maybe for a, a specific namespace. But my question now would be, okay, I want to see the error logs summarized by the Kubernetes namespace. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, this is one of the commands you find here. And if you click this, uh, this will automatically edit uh, and execute it. And now you see error logs by Kubernetes namespace. Again, same concept, you can click on the column header um, and, and sort it and you can see, okay, which uh, Kubernetes namespace has uh, the most error logs in that case. I think you should look at the Kafka worker because a lot of errors. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely true. So how would you do that? Um, you can click on it and say filter. So what you get is now yeah. the, only the Kafka worker, but um, maybe I want to go back and see the logs right of the Kafka worker yeah, maybe yeah. because the count, yeah, it's a lot, you noticed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but how do I now uh, analyze the logs? And um, with this builder here on top, um, we added the summarize command before by the Kubernetes namespace. We don't need this anymore because we have to filter mm -hmm. for Kafka worker. So I can just remove this, run it again. And now I'm having my uh, oh. uh, Kafka error logs so I could dive on, into this. Um, but maybe you said it's a lot. Maybe that's also something we want to see over time. Mm -hmm. um, also here, um, we have an interaction. If you click on a timestamp column or, or time frame column, uh, we have this convert to time series interaction. Mm -hmm. So now what this does, it really counts um, the number of error logs in this case for the Kafka worker mm -hmm. um, and um, aligns it uh, to specific time buckets. And let's do this. And it really transforms this into the time series format. Mm -hmm. I think you recently did a performance clinic uh, regarding yeah. uh, observability yeah, clinic, clinic. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, regarding um, time series. So I think this is really a great tip dive from Fabrice. Mm -hmm. um, and you get now this time series format. And now you can switch a visualization and say, okay, yeah. uh, I want to see it as a line chart or maybe bar chart because it's error logs count. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, let's say, okay, I want to change the color here to the log status format. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Error logs. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a little bit smaller. Uh, also something that you can do on every notebook section, you can hide the input, for example, uh, and you see the, the error logs over time and you can see, okay, somewhere there, uh, the, the error started mm -hmm. uh, to pile up for um, mm -hmm. this Kafka. But the, the explore logs, that's a really cool new addition, not only available, I believe, in the notebooks, but also in the dashboard. So all these widgets are, are also available, but it's a great way to start exploring the data, especially if you're not that familiar with BQL, because I assume underneath the hood, we're still creating BQL, exactly. which is just like a, a yeah. helper. Yeah. Exactly. So I will show that in a second, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but I was mentioning that we also have uh, a builder for metrics, for example. Uh -huh. So I, I also show this briefly. So um, here you can find all the metrics in Grail. Um, and for example, first thing I need to find a, a metric key so I can go with the different categories, but it can also search for something. So if I search for CPU, for example, and look for the CPU usage, um, 
I need to um, choose an aggregation mm -hmm. and I can also uh, choose a splitting already. And for mm -hmm. example, I, you can see that there are, uh, again, all the meta metadata that Dynatrace automatically enriches. Um, for example, the Kubernetes cluster, cluster, but in this case, let's just use host name mm -hmm. and run this. And then you will get all the uh, CPU metrics for the different hosts. Uh, there are quite a lot here. Mm -hmm. um, again, you can filter down using the builder and say, okay, I'll filter for the host name. And in my uh, case, let's say it should contain a specific value. Mm -hmm. So this is also uh, where you can already see um, the power of, of the QL actually beneath. So you have all the different um, filter options mm -hmm. here. So contains, for example, starts with and so on. And now if I say, uh, I know there are some hosts called demo dev mm -hmm. on this environment and I filter for these and now I get to ah, cool. um, uh, the CPU usage for mm -hmm. two of these, these hosts here on demo dev. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, again, similar concept. So you could also, for example, also interact here with the data, um, which influences the builder. For example, I can uh, say, okay, let's filter for this host. And then it adds this uh, filter for exactly this one host. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the filter that I said before. Mm -hmm. Say okay. Um, yeah, and you mentioned so um, behind those builders there's a query, and you can look at this. And um, I would like to do a more. I said started like it's for deep analysis, so maybe try a little bit more complex use case. Um, I want to start again with logs. Um, uh, let's imagine you know there are some logs uh, in one of your services where you log uh, a duration of, of queries, for example, that the service is executing. Mm -hmm. So I know duration. I can put this into the uh, content. I don't really, yeah, let's maybe maybe say I know one other thing that this is running uh, on one of the hosts that I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. um, again, so say it starts with, for example, demo dev, mm -hmm. and now get 20 logs where I have duration in there. Mm -hmm. And um, what you can see here is that the, the content, this looks a little bit like uh, JSON to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so maybe it would be nice to parse the JSON and extract something out of it. And this is where I um, bear with the builder. Um, you cannot do this anymore, but um, every builder section has this create the query section mm -hmm. shortcut. Yeah. So you can see what is actually behind um, this stuff you configured. So you see, okay, I said contains duration. Um, I filtered for host and with demo dev mm -hmm. and I limited to 20. Let's remove this limit for now. Uh, run it again. I get the same data as you can see above. Um, but now I have an additional interaction here on the content, which is extract fields. And um, also something I think you already covered. So we have the DPL architect, uh, a pattern language basically to parse your log files. Um, in this case, it's easy for me um, because it's JSON and there is a, a pattern matcher for JSON and as I just JSON okay. log data. Um, actually, that a pattern I prepared. Um, I think so if you start blank, you, yeah, you get autocomplete and say JSON log data in this case, this is the the new field that will be generated. Yeah, and folks, uh, if you want to learn more about the DPL architect or DPL in general, the database pattern language, then uh, there's videos that we have available and also a lot of documentation, but it's extremely powerful because now you can just access, in this case, any type of value, I assume, from the JSON content uh, as individual fields. Yeah? It's really cool. And does not need to be JSON, so the the, the pattern uh, language can really pass every kind of log that you yeah. have, and so you you can work with any data that you have somewhere in your logs. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me run this again, and what you will end up is uh, with a new field log data, and so that you see a little bit more. Let's say okay, I only want to uh, see the field timestamp content, keep the original content, but also the log data here. And I can and maybe do this with a different visualization. So we have the table view here, but we also have a record list. And the record list is very uh, helpful if you want to explore data based on the data types mm -hmm. that you can see. 
So you can see that the log data created a record and you can drill in, in this. And, and you can see there are different values like an ID or a message, a uh, slow query, but there are also attributes. So it's really mm -hmm. um, a kind of a complex uh, JSON structure that is here and they can really um, dive into that. And this is where I see the first interesting value here that I was searching for. I see the duration in milliseconds for the query that was running here on the uh, easy travel business uh, service. Mm -hmm. um, uh, locked basically in, in, in um, I don't know what was, I, I don't know the log file name, but basically locked here. And um, one thing that we also greatly improved As you're searching for this, just to recap, this is really interesting because we are allowing you to parse any type of structured or unstructured log content and we make it available to you in uh, to TPL in individual fields or in also in complex structures. Like in this case, if it's JSON, you can actually drill down nested uh, to all of the different fields that are part of it. Uh, now you can add fields and I guess you can say log there. So for example, I want to add the duration, as you yeah. said, like the nested fields I can drill yeah. down and say, okay, this is actually um, in my log data. Mm -hmm. And how do I access the nested fields? Um, I can say, um, you can see, I was I want to look at the attribute mm -hmm. here, so at this. And um, I want to have duration in milliseconds. And actually, yeah, that's one thing I wanted to show. Um, we added a small thing, this copy. Um, which was a little bit annoying in the past. So you can copy values and for example, have a case okay, of duration in milliseconds. Mm -hmm. And if I run this again, you will see there's now a new um, uh, field on the mm -hmm. top level, which is the duration um, that I parsed. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe one more thing. Uh, let me just maybe type this. So same thing. Um, I want to go into there, and there is one more interesting thing I saw in the in the um, attribute object, and this is the command here. So this is really. Oops. Oh, I, I, I yeah, complex record. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you can see there is uh, actually a query field hidden. So this is now quite long and I see a destination ID. And this is um, what I was searching for in this case. So I can say uh, destination and do the same thing. Um, so maybe this autocomplete already helps me. Um, so I need to say command and go a level deep, deeper and say query and then um, maybe do the copy one again and say to the destination ID. And this will, in the same thing, adds the destination. So now I have the query uh, duration and the destination um, in all the records I'm looking at. Um, again, took me a little bit, but this is already quite complex task to get this out of your logs and, and have this here. And now, because you are here in notebooks and you can visualize your data, what you could do is um, put the query duration on a line chart. Mm -hmm. So I click line chart here, and I was mentioning this briefly before this data mapping that we introduced. So we now have for every visualization a data mapping where you can say, okay, how do we map the raw data that you queried to a chart? Um, timestamp was automatically uh, recognized. Also the value duration that I have in my chart, which is the query duration mm -hmm. and the series. So I want to remove this for now. And basically what I get now is this uh, query duration chart that is a line chart. Hide the query maybe for now. Um, as I have this for two hours. I could, for example, expand the time frame and say, okay, um, query duration over the last 24 hours. Also there it says explore logs because this is how I started with this section. Let's say, let's say all this query duration. And um, you notice that there was the duration in milliseconds. So mm -hmm. on the Dynatrace side, we don't know it's milliseconds, but um, because the, the the name of the field is milliseconds, but also maybe if you wrote the log on your own, you might know. And you can now actually add this information in the notebook here. 
and you can uh, say units and formats in the options mm -hmm. and say, okay, for the duration field, I want to apply a unit for the duration. Um, there are a lot of units available. I'm searching for milliseconds in this case, and I can use milliseconds here. And suddenly you see the axis change to milliseconds. Nice. Yeah. Um, you can even um, format this and say, okay, I don't want to show any decimals. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is already uh, really cool. a lot yeah. better here. Yeah. Um, so this unit information for time series, we automatically have the unit on, on, on the time series information. But if you pass something out of a log, could yeah. be a duration, could be some dollar value, you can add this here as a unit uh, and you get a lot better formatting for your charts. Perfect. So just to recap what you did, you have a service or a system and application that is logging out query times for a particular you know, queries that the application is executing. In our case, I think it's easy travel. When easy travel, you can search for destinations and then you get back a result on how many destinations are offered. Um, and that query duration is logged in a log file, hidden deep because it's a very complex structure that is logged there. And you are just parsing out the duration, you're parsing out the destination, and with this, you create it in a matter of a couple of clicks and some some TQL uh, additional uh, filters um, and, and and like the fields add that you used. You're now getting over time the duration of all the queries that have been executed. And we also have the dimensional data if we want to. So we could even say, I guess, split by the destination or doing things like uh, I don't know, maybe just for Paris or something because I, I think I saw mm -hmm. Paris in there. So that's awesome. Yeah. Exactly. And um, one other thing you can do, and we, we introduced, is uh, showing thresholds ah, as yeah. a visualization mm -hmm. option. Yeah. So you can see there are some spikes in the chart. Yeah. And for example, if I want to add a threshold to the chart and say, okay, whenever um, the, the value is here over 200 milliseconds, mm -hmm. uh, let's sh show this in red. And you can see um, there is uh, this threshold now in the chart. And I can even add a, a command to it and say, okay, um, I don't know. We want to look at these queries. Um, and now this is also added as an uh, information Super, here. Yeah, that's nice. And um, I don't know. You could also say there you have this green, uh, yellow, red here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Say something is green, but I don't really need this here. So let's yeah, just, yeah. just remove it. And going back. And this is now really okay. I can see there are some queries that took longer. Maybe that's something that I want to pass to you mm -hmm. and, and to investigate this further. So you have all the information here, mm -hmm. um, but it, it shows it really in a nice visual way to see, hey, there are some 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 queries, not a lot of them, but some um, that I want to investigate mm -hmm. took longer than others. So to recap again on this, you are the data expert. You're doing the data analytics, the ad hoc analytics, because you somebody asked you what are the query durations and if I would like to have this now on a dashboard, I can mm -hmm. still do this as well because yes. maybe this is an interesting query that I want to see on the longer time frame. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, maybe let's just do this. Uh, so there is uh, in every section menu you have this open with um, mm -hmm. option, and this is a general concept on the platform. So you can open this uh, section in this case with any application on the platform that can handle that information that you pass here. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we say open with, and we hit an error. <laughs> Let me refresh this. Uh, as I said, it's the dev environment. Um, but what you will see, let's see if we do, but I, I believe so. Um, you will see a picker of application that can handle uh, that content I was, I was looking at. And folks, this is just, uh, brave enough to show this on the dev environment. So let's give this one more try. Otherwise, see if, yeah, here we go. Perfect. I see, and I can choose dashboards in this case. Mm -hmm. um, you also saw that notebooks were showing up. So I could, for example, send it to notebooks again and put it into a different mm -hmm. document. Yeah, so that yeah. would be a use case. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this case, okay, let's say a new dashboard. Mm -hmm. And now I have the same data available on the dashboard. Awesome. Again, I can tweak it, for example, in this case, the, I don't know, for example, the duration. I want mm -hmm. to hide that. Uh, duration, legend item, a lot of options here you can play around with, yeah. makes it bigger, nicer, and you have your um, chart here on the dashboard. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, switching back to my notebook. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, maybe um, the one thing that you mentioned, so I passed also the destination ID um, out of the queries. So I have this available also in my data mapping. And I can now say I want to split by the destination. Mm -hmm. And now you see a lot of lines. Oops. Yeah. But uh, your good eye already noticed there is the uh, Paris, for example. Mm -hmm. And again, with just clicking, interacting with the legend here, I can say I want to filter for the uh, destination Paris. So, oops, what did I do? Let me try this again. Um, so I lost, I think, the mapping. Um, but I now have the duration, and as a series, I have the destination. Mm -hmm. But I filtered down to Paris, so now I see only the query mm -hmm. um, duration uh, for Paris in this case. Okay. And I know there's a lot of other things. Um, folks, you can obviously explore yourself what else is possible, but just do me one more favor. If you click mm -hmm. next to Paris duration on the three dots that are coming yes, up. I will do. Yeah. Oop, just to show the uh, menu. people what's what's possible, right? You can you can you can query, uh, you can copy things out, but you can also do the forecasting. Yeah. So folks, for, we have we have a complete uh, video series on the forecasting capabilities that means you can forecast how uh, the query performance of certain queries like this one with Paris uh, mm -hmm. will go on. So really nice, really cool. Yeah. So so the the um, Davis AI capabilities here, you also have them there. Mm -hmm. So this is great, as you mentioned, forecasting. I think there is also um, at Perform, there were breakouts uh, regarding this uh, really nice sessions where you mm -hmm. can see how does this work together mm -hmm. with notebooks, mm -hmm. um, if you're interested. OK, so. Um, I think you already did uh, some recap what I showed. Maybe going back a little bit in my notebook. And, and I think this is what you mentioned at the beginning, right? So uh, you you use um, uh, notebooks as maybe introducing new concept learning. And, and one of the reasons why notebooks is good at this is basically the format, this top-down approach, mm -hmm. right? So I was starting high level, exploring some error logs, but then I was drilling down really into uh, here metrics, but then in different uh, in specific log lines, passing something out, um, getting my query duration for Paris. So really this top-down approach is really helpful in explaining stuff um, and, and kind of guiding um, other users um, to, to the results or the analysis that you do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, one also something that was uh, coming up quite often is um, so you can share a notebook. So if, if you're Dynatrace users, you just click share. And I can send you this notebook mm -hmm. and you can uh, collaborate on it. Um, but then sometimes you just need the data that you see in a notebook um, maybe pulled out and, I don't know, put somewhere else, right? In in your Excel sheet copy or yeah. as a product manager myself, I want to put it on my PowerPoint presentation. Mm -hmm. um, and we also made this very easy now. So let's maybe look at the log data. Um, so in this section menu, you have a download result yeah, option cool. yeah. and you can just download the stuff that you see here as CSV. Mm -hmm. And um, this, not, this does not only work for the table data here, but you can also do the same, as you see, like for the chart, you okay. have download results, CSV, and you would get the chart information as a CSV file. So again, just nice. put uh, it into your, I don't know, Excel, uh, Google Sheets, whatever, um, and, 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 and work from there. Um, kind of making it really easy to access uh, this raw data. And I would assume this also works for the same chart in a dashboard, so it doesn't matter whether you're in a dashboard or in a notebook. Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. Yeah. So if you see some information on the dashboard, mm -hmm. you have the same uh, menu entry here mm -hmm. uh, on the dashboard tile, and yeah. you can download it. Okay. Cool. That's, that's really helpful, especially, I mean, I know we want, obviously, the data to live, as much of the data live in Dynatrace and explore it, but we also understand that many people have other tools and they want to just then take the data and then, like you yes. said, Excel, PowerPoint, whatever you need. Exactly. So, so really aim to make the collaboration as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, could be also that you need that information attached to a Jira ticket, for example. So all mm -hmm. this is, is, is now uh, possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the idea is really you, you download what you see here in your section. You can always switch actually to the raw data. In this case, you really see the raw data return per rail, and you, for example, can download it as ah, well. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all there. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, interactions I already mentioned, so the, the, the copy thing is small one, but, but there. Also, what is interesting, I don't have an example for that now, uh, but if you have a, 
maybe I can construct one. Let's see, I want to just add a, a query section and say uh, fetch logs limited to one. So this is just one log line. And imagine you have a field there. So I'm I'm now just adding it uh, as an example, which is URL and you have uh, something like mm -hmm. uh, this in your data, or you can also extract, extract this again, it, yeah. right? So if you have some um, um, uh, parameter that you can attach to your URL um, and you see this in your data, you now have this open link in yeah, yeah. So this will just open uh, Dynatrace.com as I added it here. Mm -hmm. But this is uh, again, also available on dashboards, but really powerful to um, kind of enrich your data and kind of already building some uh, connections to other systems, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. um, something that was also quite often asked for mm -hmm. um, and is, is finally here. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm, one last thing. So I think from my side, I already showed quite some stuff, but maybe you your good eye has noticed and I feel uh, adventurous today. Uh, so I have this plus and you can see there is Ask Copilot uh, yeah. section. So there, um, if you uh, attend the perform or watch perform videos, you, you there was a lot of uh, buzz around Davis Copilot, um, but maybe just from my perspective, why uh, we brought it to notebooks um, and have it there is really this uh, entry barrier, right? So you, I said it's the deep analysis, but the first step is always, okay, how do I find my data? Where do I get my data from? And having this uh, natural language interface there, asking for data mm -hmm. is, I think, a, one of the uh, really cool option to uh, make use of, of a large language models uh, and the Davis Copilot in this case. And let's try this out. Um, you remember my um, log exploration here. Mm -hmm. I was asking for Kubernetes namespaces mm -hmm. and I would um, ask Copilot basically the same thing. So say, okay, um, number of error logs um, by Kubernetes namespaces. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see if that works. Um, and again, so the, so from the concept perspective, so we are translating this in a query mm -hmm. and querying the data automatically for you. And again, you can interact on the data with exactly the same way as you used to in Nook. So you mm -hmm. can pin it to a dashboard, you can create a DQL section out of it. So all this is basically possible um, um, in the same way uh, that we showed before. Mm -hmm. And you can see now, um, I have now this table, um, of, of of error logs uh, in my Kubernetes namespaces. Um, Kafka worker is still <laughs> an I have issue. It, yeah. um, but now, as I said, so I could, for example, say create the query section out of this, mm -hmm. and I see the query behind it, and I can uh, work with this query again. And I believe this is a really powerful thing. Um, we are starting a preview for this uh, Copilot uh, integration in notebooks. Um, so if you want to participate, reach out to your uh, CSM account mm -hmm. owner on your account um, and let us know. Very nice. Yeah, and I think this will be hugely helpful. I mean, you already built with the Metrics Explorer and the Log Explorer already two, you, two tools that are really then easy to use to navigate and explore the data. But having a natural language interface and seeing also what gets generated uh, is super helpful. Yeah. Yeah, you can basically already see this here. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I use the section menu. There's a button. It makes yeah. it also easy to to work there with yeah. SQL. Yeah. And again, as I said, like same, you you can show this in a different way. I can use a pie chart, for example, uh, donut in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, show this here. I can uh, filter for this stuff and and so on. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's all all there. Cool. Couple of final questions for me, and this might be some roadmap items, but it, it comes up. First of all, I see the histogram over there. Is mm -hmm. the histogram uh, coming? Is it there? Um, it's it's coming. So I, I um, was thinking about showing it today. We still need to do the final touches for the histogram visualization, but that's one of the next visualization we will release. Um, one other that is coming is the honeycomb. Uh, Maybe yeah. not so 
Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you will use it in a notebook, but definitely very helpful on dashboards. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, histogram and honeycomb are two of the next visualization that are coming. Yeah. Um, but we will, or we are working on many more actually. Cool. Yeah, I also know that the DSLO is coming and some others. Uh, last question that I have, as people are using more and more notebooks and the same is true for dashboards, any concepts that you have in mind on how to maybe structure notebooks, how to take them, how to organize them? Is there mm -hmm. anything coming as well? Um, yes. So um, maybe um, show it here. So you, uh, just to show you a little bit that what uh, Andy is talking about. So I have already a lot of, of notebooks here. I can search for them. Um, uh, we introduced, for example, this, uh, trash functionality. So you can see recently deleted notebooks and so on. Um, but yes, this is also something that we will work during this year to provide you with better ways to organize your notebooks, for example, taking exactly. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is the um, um, thing where uh, it helps you. You you can also do uh, small things like, mm -hmm. uh, okay, or is it owned by me? Is it owned by others? Uh, or if, was it shared with you, for example? Yeah. Um, so that's already there and we will uh, improve this over time. And one of the next things is definitely something that you can, you can better organize your uh, documents cool yeah i mean i know a very popular feature in the kind of classic uh, dashboards was the, the favorite feature mm -hmm. where you can favorite things i think that's and also like the um i know we had like a, a stat on how popular a yeah. notebook or dashboard was i think that was really useful so mm -hmm. uh, and uh yeah and also what i saw at perform it was indicated in one of the screenshots that uh, we're working on also like uh, an option to say create or import notebooks and dashboards from like a um, collection or like a mm -hmm. I don't know a, a space where you don't have to create things from scratch anymore. Yeah. So exactly. So on the on the one hand, I mean you can already import uh, notebooks, mm -hmm. uh, so you you can download them here, for example, as JSON, mm -hmm. uh, provide them in some place and and import them. Um, but we want to, at one hand, um, allow you kind of the automation, automatic uh, rollout of, of notebooks and dashboards. So if you think about Monaco, for example, mm -hmm. um, having an, an, an automated way that you can deploy your notebooks or dashboards to your user base. And the other thing um, that uh, you might refer to what is coming is um, kind of uh, presets for your exactly. dashboards. Yeah, yeah. And how this will work is, um, for example, if you have the Kubernetes app, right? So mm -hmm. your Kubernetes um, uh, app shows you a, a great overview of your Kubernetes environment, but the Kubernetes app will also come with a presets of Kubernetes dashboards, for example. Mm -hmm. And you will likely, the, the way where I showed like all your dashboards, you will have maybe a section where I say, okay, pre-installed uh, dashboards, and then you can look at uh, uh, let's say maybe opinionated mm -hmm. uh, dashboard of a Kubernetes cluster, but tailored to your environment mm -hmm. or based on your environment data. Yeah, that's really cool. That's gonna be super, super useful. Awesome. Um, I think, Philip, that was a lot of new stuff, especially I really like to recap, I really like what you see here, explore logs to explore metrics. Obviously, Davis Copilot, you opened up the invitation if anybody wants to be part of the preview program, reach out to your CSM, to your customer success manager, let them then get in contact uh, with the product team. I really uh, like the new visualization options on the different charts and dashboards. I am a big fan of the thresholds because that really helps uh, a lot um, to visualize if you are in the, in the right range or not range. Yeah, I mean, mm. that's... Uh, Cool stuff and yeah, notebooks are really great for ad hoc exploration of your data. And then anything you are defining here and finding out here, you can then just easily take it over into a dashboard. You can also take it over into a uh, into a workflow. So you can okay. also in workflows uh, basically execute those queries for you. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. I think nothing to add from my side. Um, I'm really looking forward to to your feedback. Um, please go ahead, try it out play around with notebooks. I think it's really a, a great tool to explore your observability data. Perfect. And I'm pretty sure we'll have you back because there's more stuff coming. Thank yes. you so much. This is it from the Ops Clinic Studio. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.